Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to write uh, formulas for ionic compounds. In the last video that uh, I covered it had to do with covalent bonding and ionic bonding and I drew some pictures uh, such as the, the picture that I drew for sodium and for chlorine to demonstrate where the electrons are moving from one atom to the next. But in this video there's no more pictures. Okay, so this is an easier way to figure out the formula of a compound. Okay, so let's get started and you see what I mean. So we have cesium and we have oxygen. These are two atoms and we want to write a, an ionic formula for them. The first thing you want to do is write the symbol for each one of these atoms. So the symbol for cesium is CS and the symbol for oxygen is O. And uh, you also need to take into account where cesium and where oxygen are found on the periodic table. Cesium is found in group 1a of the periodic table and oxygen is found in group 6a of the periodic table. You need a periodic table for um, these examples that I'm going to provide. Okay, so now what do you do? Well, cesium is a metal. <clears throat> so what that means is that cesium likes to lose electrons. So you need to ask yourself, how many electrons is cesium going to lose? Well, cesium is in group 1A, which means that it will lose one electron. Okay, cesium is going to lose one electron and it's going to become the one positive. It's becoming one more positive because it's losing one electron. Okay, oxygen is in group 6A of the periodic table. Now the same rule does not work uh, like the, like what we did here for cesium. For nonmetals, the rule is actually the other way around. For nonmetals, what you want to do is you want to get the number 8 and subtract it from whatever number this is. So it would be 8 minus 6 will be 2. Okay? Now, um, we use 8 because the the shells usually carry 8 electrons to be happier, to be stable. That's called the octet rule. That's why we use the number 8. So what you want to do is uh, 8 minus these 6 electrons that are in the outer shell. So to be happy, oxygen needs 2 more electrons. And oxygen is a non-metal, which means it's going to gain electrons. So the charge is going to be 2 minus. Okay, <clears throat> Okay, so that's the first thing that you got to do. The next thing is something called the crisscross rule. What you're going to do is you're going to get the number, so I'm going to get this number 2 and I'm going to crisscross it over here. And I'm going to get this number 1 and I'm going to crisscross it over here. So now what I have is cesium with the number 2 down here and oxygen with the number one but because it's a number one I'm not even gonna write it I'm just gonna leave it like this so this is your formula okay so if you wanna make a compound with cesium and oxygen you need to have two cesium atoms per oxygen atom okay so this is the formula cesium two and then oxygen this is the formula <clears throat> let's go on to the next one the next one is aluminum and nitrogen the first thing you do is write down the symbol. The symbol for aluminum is Al and the symbol for nitrogen is N. Okay, aluminum is found in group 3A and nitrogen is found in group 5A. Now aluminum is a metal so aluminum is going to lose three electrons and it's going to become three more positive. Whereas nitrogen Okay, for the, for the second atom, you want to use the octet rule, which is 8 minus the number that you have here, which is a 5 in this case. 8 minus 5 is 3. Okay, so nitrogen is going to gain 3 electrons because nitrogen is a non-metal, and non-metals gain electrons. So that's why I'm going to represent it with a 3 and a minus. Okay, and then the next step is simply to use the crisscross rule that we just learned and when you do that you're gonna have aluminum okay I'm gonna get this three over here and crisscross it down here and I'm gonna get nitrogen and crisscross the three up here 
I'm going to put it there. <clears throat> okay, so for every three aluminums, you need to have three nitrogens. Now we can actually simplify this, and this, the formula, will actually become one aluminum per one nitrogen. So this is the formula. This is the answer. Okay? This one is technically also correct, but you want to leave it in simplest terms. So when you simplify, you're actually gonna get uh, you're actually gonna get one aluminum per every nitrogen. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, so now we have magnesium and oxygen. Okay, so if you look at the periodic table, magnesium, the symbol is Mg, and magnesium is found in group 2A. Oxygen, the symbol is O, and oxygen is found in 6A. This is the group. Okay, so magnesium is a metal, which means it's going to lose, how many electrons is magnesium going to lose? Two electrons, so it's going to become two more positive. Okay, and oxygen, you got to use the octet rule. Okay, so 8 minus 6 is equal to 2. So oxygen is a non-metal, and non-metals like to gain electrons, so it's going to be 2 minus. Okay, now you use the crisscross rule. Erase this. Okay, so you use the crisscross rule, and you're going to get Mg2O2. But this you can simplify to MgO. Okay, so this simplifies to MgO, and this is the formula for mixing magnesium and oxygen. Okay, let's go on to some more examples. Okay, now in this case, I'm actually telling you the name of a compound. This is copper 2 sulfide. So n now th this is a little different from the top because in the top I just gave you the atom. I gave you cesium and oxygen. But in the bottom I'm actually giving you the name of the compound, copper 2 sulfide. <clears throat> the reason there's a 2 there is because copper is a special type of element. Copper falls into a category called transition metals on the periodic table. And the transition metals, uh, they, they exist in different forms. So you can have copper with a charge of 2, or you can have copper with a different type of charge. If you want to find out, uh, there's actually a table in, in every chemistry book that uh, specifies the charges for the transition metals. Okay, but here I, I gave you the charge already. So I'm going to simply write the symbol for copper, which is Cu. And I'm telling you that the, the charge of copper is 2. So right away I'm going to write a 2 there. Okay, now there is no sulfide on the periodic table, but there is a sulfur. So the symbol for, the symbol for sulfur is S. And sulfur is found in group 6A. If it's found in group 6A, then you use the octet rule, 8 minus 6 is 2. So sulfur is going to have a 2 minus. Minus because it's a non-metal and it's gaining the electrons. When you use the uh, crisscross rule, you're going to have CuS. So this is the formula. Okay, and I already simplified it here because it would actually be Cu2S2. You're using the crisscross rule to put this 2 okay, over here and this 2 over here. Okay, use the crisscross rule, but I simplified it so it becomes Cus. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, sodium is in group 1A of the periodic table. This is the symbol for sodium, Na. It's in group 1A. And hydroxide is nowhere in the periodic table because hydroxide is actually something called a polyatomic um, uh, atom or poly, polyatomic um, anion, actually. Polyatomic anion. We're going to cover these later on. Hydroxide actually looks like this and it has a charge of minus 1. So 1 minus is the charge for hydroxide. <clears throat> This is something that in your chemistry book you're going to have a table with all the polyatomic anions. Okay, anions because it's negative. This is a polyatomic anion. Sodium is in group 1A, so it has a 1 plus charge. Okay, when you do the crisscross, you're going to get 
sodium and hydroxide. This is the formula and this compound is called sodium hydroxide like it says here. Alright and the last one that we're gonna do is calcium and iodide. So calcium I'm gonna write the symbol which is CA and calcium is in group 2A of the periodic table and there is no iodide but there is an iodine in the periodic table and iodine is in group 7A of the periodic table 7A um, okay so we have calcium it's in group 2A it is a metal which means it's going to give up two electrons to become two positive and iodine is a non-metal which means it wants how many electrons does iodine want using the octet rule 8 minus 7 is equal to 1 so iodine wants one electron and it's negative because when you gain electrons you become more negative now if you use the crisscross rule you're gonna see that you're gonna have calcium iodide and then you put a little 2 here in the bottom because this 2 is being crisscrossed over here the 1 is being crisscrossed to the calcium but I don't have to write that down so this is the answer to this problem calcium iodide when we get into naming you're gonna see why the name iodine turns into iodide so you're gonna see that when we get into naming and that covers all for this video